Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel Houseplanty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me and to the side of me today, it's tropical houseplants. And <laughs> you might be able to guess the plot that we're going to be doing an update review on today. We are going to be talking about what I think is fast becoming a lot of people's favourite, the Monstera Thai constellation. But before we get into any of that, let's lay down some ground rules. So if you're one of the people that are joining again, welcome back. <laughs> at this point, you know the deal. Down at the progress bar below, you can jump to your favourite chapter if you want to. And predominantly, these kind of ground rules are mainly for new people joining. And if you are new joining, Welcome to the slight insanity that is this plant review series. As I said, the ground rules are predominantly going to be for people that are joining first, and it's mainly to kind of say that there is no way that I can make these reviews unbiased. <laughs> it is my biased experience to my specific plant growing in my specific conditions. The conditions for this plant have recently changed, and I will be talking about it in the video. But yes, overall the conditions generally for most of my houseplants is growing in the conservatory that you can see around me. So, and whatever that might mean in terms of humidity, light, heat, cold, in the winter, all of the above. So without further ado, let's carry on with the plant review series and let's do the update on the Monstera Thai constellation. So a bit of background to bring everybody back up to speed and also give a bit of an update since the last time that we did the review. This is a plant that I got probably, I think we're coming up to three and a half, four years ago now, and it is sizable and I will kind of try lifting it up without like pulling everything down. You can see some of the oldest, oldest leaves right down there at the bottom and some of the newest leaves right there at the top. Now. This is a plant, as I was going to say, that I got from a local plant store, I would say. I think I'm pretty sure it was a local plant store and it was an exciting time because it came on the market. And as I said, this was before even more people are aware of it like they are now. So even back then, this was a plant that didn't come up very often. So when they said that, look, we've got some in stock, I'm just like, great, order, rush, 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 rush. I got into the car. It was the first few days that I was learning to drive. <laughs> Interesting little side notes for the people that have been here for a while. Plants are one of the main reasons why I got comfortable driving. Again, slight tangent, but I got my driving license at 18, moved to London, lived there for nearly a decade where there is no need to drive, so I didn't really ever drive regularly basically. So I was getting a bit rusty and I was still not very confident as a driver. Moved to the area that I am now where there's Public transport is a thing that doesn't really exist that much, but I was trying to find reasons to travel, and I did. I Picking up plants from different plant stores became the excuse that I needed to start driving and start building my confidence. So yeah, random little side note. But yeah, so I went, got in the car, kind of rushed there safely to the plant store to pick up my plant. The good thing was because I went to the plant store, I was able to then talk to the actual owner of the plant store and choose one of my plants. Now there was a couple of plants already that had sold and they had sold specifically. This is before a lot of plant businesses started doing, you can choose option A, B, C, D, and you can choose your actual specific plant but they were offering that to some of their kind of more regular customers. And at that point, I wasn't a regular customer to that store. I eventually became because no self-control. But yeah, so I was able to pick one of the better ones, if that makes sense, in terms of variegation. So I brought it into the house. This has moved with me, I think, three times now. So it's done well, all things considered. There is some kind of leaf damage there where that leaf is a bit kind of snappy in the middle of the midrib, but it's still fully attached and it's still doing okay. There is some yellowing, there is some crisping on the white sections and we will talk about that. But overall, it's been quite 
a, a kind of simple plant to not only care for, but to kind of fall in love with. I, this was a plant that I, it was around the time when I really wanted the elbow. I think I might prefer this to my elbow now. I find this much more interesting and it's keeping my interest for a lot longer. I mean, I wouldn't ever change both my elbows for anything, but I do, I have fallen in love with this more than I was expecting to. But yeah, overall, it was, it's a plant that kind of did its thing. It sat behind me in this section here. It was kind of stuck between shelves against the window. It probably wasn't getting the best quality of light. It was getting some really high light at some times and it was getting some low light, like really low light at other points. I didn't ever get to see it because it was squished between things, but it just kept trucking on and kept doing its thing and it was fine. So I thought as I did the conservatory up recently and all the plants had to come out and then we were going to come back in, this was one of the plants that I was going to transition out of the conservatory because in theory it is a monstera. It doesn't need, need, need those high levels of humidity. And just to be clear, the browning on the white sections or the cream sections were occurring in here before I moved it out. So it's not necessarily the household kind of conditions, but it it was, and as I said, it was probably the light levels that were causing some of the distress on this plant. It probably went dry a bit too long and all of these things. Yes, there are some of the older leaves that like, look like they might be kind of on their way out and that's fine, but this now sits behind my desk in my office in the house and I work from home, so I get to see this beauty every day now, which is really, really quite nice to kind of be able to appreciate this plant a bit more, especially when it was tucked away before. And it's interesting because that space that I have behind me, I needed something quite narrow and tall, but actually the way that this has grown, and I'm not gonna say that it's not gonna move around and I might have issues then, it kind of fits a bit in that space. And hopefully I would have added a picture somewhere that you might be able to see. But before anybody asks, I'll add a picture here of what this plant looked like when I first got it from my plant care app. And it was a relatively established plant. It wasn't what I'm seeing coming out a lot more now in the market, which is the lot more juvenile plants. You can get some of the more established plants with fenestrations and pinations. The splits of the pinations, fenestrations are the holes, as we all found out recently. <laughs> so coming into speed of growth. And this is an interesting one, and I will say this isn't the this isn't the fastest monstera. I'm trying to think if this is the slowest monstera that I've got. Possibly, the challenge here is that with this specific plant, I don't know if it's just because it was a bit kind of forgotten and squished in places, and as I said, wasn't getting kind of prime real estate anywhere really. I mean the light levels that it's getting now, and hopefully when I've added the picture you might have been able to see what it looks like in the office. If I haven't I will add it now. But this is a bit further back from the window than it was before. It was much closer to the same window. The direction of both the conservatory and the office are in the same kind of aspect. So the light levels should be the same, it just won't be getting light at the volume of light that it's getting in the conservatory. But yeah, I will say, I've not had a new leaf since I moved it, but it, this newest leaf had only just hardened off before I moved it, so... Yeah, it's, it's not the fastest growing plant by any stretch of the imagination. It's not just Monstera, but the fastest growing plant. If you consider that I've had this for nearly four years, I don't think maybe I've lost one leaf. I'm trying to see now if I've lost any leaves. I don't think I've lost any leaves. So we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine leaves in nearly four years. That gives you an idea. And I mean, again, there was all the caveats, like it probably isn't growing in the best conditions and all of these things. So it remains to be seen now if things are going to change and some of these petioles are very, very long. The candy striping on them is beautiful. But yeah, in terms of speed, if I was to benchmark this, and I, I can talk about 
because it's only recently moved out of the conservatory. I can talk about it as if it was still in the conservatory. So if a golden pothos in here in the summer months might grow two to three new leaves a month, this might get a new leaf every couple of months if I'm lucky. Uh, in the winter, it almost slows down to no growth at all, basically. So that gives you a bit of an understanding. And again, I would encourage all of you, if you've had different experiences, let us all know down below. The one aspect that I would like you to be aware of when you're making those comments is, is your plant growing faster, but is it a lot more juvenile with the, the juvenile kind of leaves without the splits, without the fenestrations, all of these things. I'd be curious because I don't know whether or not this slows down as much as it does because it is the size that it is and it is a bit more mature. But coming into ease of propagation, and this isn't an easy one to propagate in terms of the actual internodal spaces. This one is getting a bit larger now, and I will, I'm not gonna lift this whole plant up. It is in on as well, so it is exceptionally heavy, and it's a bit wobbly. So <laughs> I don't know if anybody's eagle-eyed, and I don't know whether or not you might be able to see if I move some leaves away. Can you see where my finger is pointing without tipping the whole thing down? That is one bamboo support stick. So janky support sticks for the win for this one, 100%. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, if I'd put it on a moss pole, it might have been even bigger, potentially have grown even faster. I don't know because I've not done it. If you have done it on a moss pole and you've seen that it grows faster than on what I'm talking about in the previous section, do let us know. But yeah, in terms of ease of propagation, your biggest challenge is going to be able to get that cut between those really tight internodal spaces. And hopefully I'll have some videos or pictures that I can add here so you can see. And after you've taken that cut, I mean, it is still a Monstera. There is, and I will lift it up now, hopefully, so you might be able to see. Can you see the, the, the just the level of the aerial roots on this one? This, to me, grows a lot more similarly to the actual Monstera deliciosa that everybody might have in their house, those kind of big, big leaves, rather than the I know it's technically not called the Bozigiana, the elbow one, the, the smaller form, but yeah, it is one of those things that, so the aerial roots are significant. So in that respect, it's probably no more difficult than taking a cutting and propagating a Monstera Deliciosa with the slight twist that it might take a bit longer because of the level of irrigation. But, and I didn't say this in the background because I think enough people have seen this online, but maybe it kind of warrants repeating, this is the Monstera that is variegated that is stable in its variegation. Unlike the Monstera albo, which is an unstable chimeric variegation, if I'm not mistaken, this is stable variegation. And I know that the Thai constellation is predominantly being produced, if I'm not mistaken, by tissue culture. It's not to say that it cannot be done by a kind of traditional cuttings and clonal propagation like we would do for most of our other plants, so cut a cutting, root it out, and then grow a new plant. It's just that the actual process of tissue culture is a lot faster when it comes to plants like this, so they can kind of get them out faster. I am not gonna touch on the Costa, Car Costa Farms controversy. I don't know if you would call it a controversy. It is probably in our kind of like part of the internet or part of the world. Uh, but yeah, like um, I'm not gonna touch that. I am sure there's quite a few of my American followers that are probably gonna be having a few things to say further down below. Hopefully that has improved by the way. In, the, in Europe at the moment, we are seeing these come out a bit more frequently and I'll talk about that on availability. But yeah, in terms of propagation, not the fastest because it doesn't grow the fastest I found and a bit challenging because of the the way you would need to take the cut in the internodal spaces but other than that it's kind of like a Monstera Deliciosa. So 
So coming into availability actually with this one, and this is, <laughs> and I didn't want to mention the cost of farms, and I'm not going to mention the cost of farms, but in Europe at least, as I mentioned in the very beginning of the video, this wasn't a plant that used to come out very often. There is that notion of the tissue culture and it was coming out predominantly, I think the ones that we were getting in Europe were coming from kind of plant nursery in the Netherlands. I know there was points in time where people were getting these shipped over from further abroad, basically. So importing them, not necessarily from companies like Equigenera. I don't think Equigenera had this, but like from the Far East, essentially. And I don't remember, I remember back then I was looking at a lot more the, the kind of import videos that other YouTubers are doing. I don't know if this ever shipped particularly well. I would assume it probably did, but I'm not 100% sure basically. But yes, yeah, so there was kind of small influxes of these that were coming in from the nurseries in the Netherlands. And that's when I was able to capture it. And I think, based on what I'm seeing now, because I'm seeing a lot more juvenile, there, as I said, there are some that are more mature like this, or like what it was when I first got it, but I'm also seeing a lot more juvenile for Monstera Thai constellations coming out in the market, more so than it would have been when I first got this. So I'm assuming they're probably doing that because it means they can turn them around a bit faster and not have to wait for them to become a bit more mature before they sell them on, because there is that demand there. But the waves of them being released, at least here in Europe, from, again, I sound like a broken record, probably the Netherlands, was kind of not necessarily unpredictable, but it, it came out in waves. So everybody, all the retailers who could get their hands on them would get their hands on them at the same time, they would all sell at exactly the same time and then be sold out until the next batch came out. And when I say unpredictable, it wasn't like you could say, okay, every three months there's going to be a rush. It was less reliable than that, basically. So, And I don't think that's massively changed. I just think that the time frame between all of these plant stores getting them has become shorter, at least here. So, and because of, I'm assuming again, it's to do with those more juvenile forms of these plants coming out. And as long as people have got the patience to wait for it to grow, then that's not an issue basically. Price wise, I think I got this for exceptionally low treble digits, exceptionally low. So a hundred and something basically, it wasn't 400 or 300 or 200, it wasn't even that much. There were points where I was seeing the more mature forms of these with quite a few mature leaves going for almost mid to high mid treble digits, pretty sure. Uh, I don't think, I think the prices have come down significantly since then. And I know obviously, because you can get the more juvenile forms, I think the juvenile forms are definitely in the double digits, probably mid to low double digits, not low, low, but mid double digits for sure. Uh, I think anyway, might be wrong, correct me. But yeah, it's it's an interesting one because by now you would have assumed years later of people still wanting this plant, they would be enough around that that high level of demand would drop. Whether or not some of these retailers are kind of quote unquote manipulating the market and releasing them slowly out so they can keep the price is high, I wouldn't be one to comment, but that could be happening as well, basically. So coming into pests for this one, and it's an interesting one, and I think I'm probably going to repeat myself in what I said on my previous video, where spider mates have happened on this once, and I've had to deal with them. The other thing that was major on this is like any good Monstera thrips. So just definitely keep an eye out for the thrips. And I find, I'm trying to think with this one, if it was this one or the elbow, I found that thrips congregated not necessarily on the variegated sections themselves, especially the, the sectoral variegated sections, the bigger white or cream sections in this case, but I found that they did that around the margin. So where the leaf goes from sectoral white to green, I found that for mine, and that might just be my experience, I found that that's where I would see the first instances of thrips attacking or damaging the plants. So maybe that's a place to start. If I am talking rubbish, do let me know down below. But 
yeah, it is those two big ones. I don't really think I've ever had mealybugs on this, which is impressive considering it was stuck in a corner previously around a lot of plants that did regularly get mealybugs. So there is that to be said. So coming into accessories and care for this one, it's an interesting one. I don't know whether or not you noticed before when I lifted it up, and I'll see if I can maybe add a clip here. It's in Pond, it's in Lechuza Pond. It's still in my kind of smaller semi-hydro mix. It hasn't been one that has moved yet to the chunkier semi-hydro coarse mix that I get from Soil Ninja. Looking at it now and seeing as we're coming into the summer, this might get a bit of an upgrade at some point soon. The other thing that's really exciting, and I don't know whether or not I'm gonna be able to do it on what I'm looking at doing, one of the amazing viewers on here uh, showed me their collection of succulents recently. Sorry, this is a bit of a tangent, but it does link into this, I promise. Their collection of succulents, and they had the most amazing pots. And I was just like, oh, these are really cool, hexagonal. And they said, you know what? I 3D printed them. And I'm just like, oh, I've been wanting to like dip my toes into 3D printing for a while. So we had a bit of a discussion. They kind of suggested a few um, awesome beginner 3D printers. And hi, by the way, you're hopefully you're possibly going to see this. And I will be doing that. I will be buying one. My birthday is coming up on the 9th of May. So that will be my birthday gift to myself this year. And the reason why I'm very excited and I'm kind of sad is because I potentially want to make some pots <laughs> to the specifications that I want them to be in, basically. So watch this space. Hopefully I'll be able to show you something at some point, potentially. But yeah, it is probably going to get moved into that horse mix with potentially a DIY 3D printed pot. This might be one of the guinea pig plants. It's, it, it has been loving its life in the Choose Upon, and to be fair, I think all of my Monsteras at this point, the elbows in front of me, you can't see because they're right behind the camera, and this, they're all in some form of semi-hydro mix, and they do a lot better because I then don't have to stress about uh, root rot, because all three, of the variegated monsters that I have, the two arbos and this, would always have a propensity towards getting root rot. And I find with this is for nine months of the year, I would have all of them just in the semi-hydro mix, no reservoir beneath it, and just water it like I would normally in terms of if they were in a soil mix. In the summer months when it does get quite warm and I have to do that quite frequently, it might be the three months of the year that they get a bit of a reservoir just because it means I don't have to water quite so frequently. But generally speaking, does it need high humidity? No. As with most kind of house plants, would it appreciate the high humidity that it had in here? Yes. Has it made a big difference on the creamy sectoral sections of the leaves now that it's no longer in the high humidity environment? So far, no. In terms of fertilizing, this one gets the same treatment as all of my other house plants. Is it gets a weak fertilization with liquid gold leaf that I would do normally because obviously it's in semi hydro, and I do that I think pretty much every watering or every other watering, and it seems absolutely fine. Obviously, I mentioned before the one a singular janky support stick. Don't get me wrong. Yes, potentially, if you gave this a very strong moss pole, it would probably appreciate it and it would have something more to attach to. But all I do a lot of the times is the arrow roots, when they get long enough, I'll just shove them back into the semi hydro kind of media. This, in this case, it is actually to choose upon and um, it grows quite happily. But other than that, it's just, it is like a Monstera Deliciosa. I found this more so than anything else. So I just treat it in the same way. So coming into final thoughts for this plant, and hopefully I'll find my old score and put it at the top there, but I'll start like I always do, knowing what I know now, even for the update, if I didn't have this plant, would I get this? Guess what I'm going to say for this one? Yes, I would definitely get this. I would, knowing what I know now, I'd probably give it a bit more of a 
special location in my house rather than just kind of like tucking it away because I know that I'd fall in love with the plant now. So there is that to be said. In terms of scoring for this one, I don't know whether or not it's changed. As I said, hopefully I would have put it at the top. I would give this a strong nine or even a 10, because actually it ticks a lot of boxes. It's interesting to look at, it's got variegation. It's stable variegation. It likes being in semi-hydro. It kind of did well even when forgotten and even in bad conditions. It's an overall good plant. I get why there's so many people that are after it other than just the aesthetics. And I also get why so many people are still quite in love with their Thai constellations. But yeah, without kind of belaboring the point a bit too much, definitely one that I would suggest. I know probably not helping, especially you've been trying to get one for a while and you still haven't managed to. I'm just adding insult to injury really, but it is definitely worth the wait basically. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you all here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.